Hi, welcome to a drop of Excel's first video. Let's begin with some baby steps with user interface and cell referencing basics and then we will move on to learning a lot of more interesting things. So let's begin with user interface. On top, you see the name of the file in the middle and just next to the search. Some of you may not have this search option if you're using an older version of Excel. So you'll see only this name of the file. Below that, you see this entire menu, which is also known as the ribbon, R-I-B-B-O-N, ribbon. In the ribbon, there are multiple tabs. You see home, insert, page layout, formulas, data, a lot of these tabs. Now within each tab, you see a sections, get and transform data, queries, data types, sort and filter, data tools. Similarly in home, you see clipboard, font, alignment, number, etc. Which is very essential to know when you're learning the basics of Excel. Below the menu, you see a small FX button. So if you take your mouse towards it, it's called insert function. Just on the left side of FX, you see a box in which right now A1 is written. That box is called the name box. On the right side of FX, you see a long box, a big box, which is called the formula bar. Below that, you see the entire sheet, the worksheet, right? The worksheet is made up of rows and columns. Columns are named as A, B, C, D and rows are named as one, two, three, four. So a lot of times uh, people get confused, you know, what is a row and what is a column, right? Whether column is vertical, row is vertical, what is happening? It's very easy, right? So when you book a movie theater ticket, do you book a row or a column? You book a row, right? So always your row is horizontal. And the aisle that you walk in in between to reach to your seat in the movie theater, that's your column. So this becomes your row and this becomes your column. Very simple. So whenever you get confused, think of the movie theater and think whether you are walking in the aisle that is in the column or you're walking in the row that is in the seats. Right. Moving on. An intersection of a row and a column is called a cell. A single cell. So where I have pointed my cursor right now, that is G5. What I mean by this is, whenever you want to name a cell, you call it as the first the column reference and then the row reference. So you call this as G5. Below this in the view, you see we have three sheets in this file right now. So by default, when you start a new file, you will have one sheet sheet one it will call be it'll be called sheet one right now i've created three sheets so this is the first sheet the second sheet and the third sheet right now like this you can click on plus sign and you can add as many number of sheets you want all right so what i have done is i have put a link in this youtube video description where you will see the details of what are the limitations in terms of number of columns in a sheet number of rows in a sheet, how many characters you can put in a single cell and also how many sheets you can add, right? All that details I have put in a link below in the description. Please click on that, go through it so you have full clarity of it. Moving on, on the right side, you see there are three buttons. The first is called normal, then page layout and then page break preview. If you are an avid Excel user, you would have used this. Otherwise, generally, nobody even realizes that there is something like this here. But many people get confused when they open a file of these views. So I'll just go to the normal. This is what we use a normal view. When I go to the page layout, this is how it looks. So many a times when you get a file and you open it, it looks like this. You get totally confused. Now, what do I do with this? How do I get back to my normal look? Nothing to worry, just click on normal and you're back. Similarly, there is a third one, which is page break, which only shows how much content is there, right? So when this also happens, you get totally confused at how do I look at my normal? I want to type something in the different cells. How do I do that? Just click on normal and you're back. The last thing on the screen, 
the zoom so you can use this plus sign minus sign you can use the scroll or you can click on the 100% and you can choose a particular zoom percentage. This is pretty easy. Everybody would have used zoom at some point of time. So that's with respect to the entire user interface. So we are done with 1.1. Let's move to 1.2, right? If you have anything that you want to kind of review, pause the video here, go back, go through the 1.1 again, and only then move to 1.2 once you're clear with all the aspects. All right, let's move to 1.2. So I'm just going to zoom in a little. Now, I want you to do this with me. So just open a blank Excel file and do it with me. So when I say do it with me, I will pause my voice in between. So you don't have to pause the video, right? Unless you are lagging behind, only then pause the video. Otherwise, just follow what I'm saying. So you keep switching between my screen and your own Excel, right? Okay. So first click on A1. I'm going to write something in the notepad to make you understand better. This is called a single cell reference. So when you click on only A1, it is called a single cell reference. Now what you do is you keep your cursor on A1. On the keyboard, keep control pressed and click on B5. Keep control pressed and click on B5. So what you have done is you have selected two individual cells. Making sense? Please try that out. Click on A1. Keep control pressed and click on B5. When you do this, essentially you have selected two individual cells, right? So two single cell references. Now, theoretically, when you will look at this, you will need to understand that there is there is to be some indication that you have selected these two cells. So what will you put in between? Think about it. You would have definitely used this. So we will put a comma in between, right? Now, where is this comma? Where do you see it on the screen? You do not see it on the screen right now. So when we will go to the video of formulas and functions, that's where you will realize that, okay, how is this comma really coming into the place? How is it being used? But remember, when you are using or selecting two or more individual cells, you will always have a comma in between, right? So let's try this one more time. Click on A1, keep control pressed and click on B5. Again, keep control pressed and click on C7 right so now what you have done is you have selected three individual cells a1 control b5 control c7 please try that out how will you write this so you will write this as a1 comma b5 comma c7 and this will be three single cell references I hope that's making sense to everyone. Let's move on. Now let's click on A1. All right. Now keep shift pressed, shift I repeat, and click on B5 with your mouse. So what we did is we clicked on A1, we kept shift pressed on the keyboard, and we clicked on B5. Now what happened is all the cells between A1 and B5 got selected. So now I'm going to ask you, are 10 cells selected or 9? You see a white cell, right? So my question is, are 10 cells selected or 9? The answer is, it is 10 cells. Yes, you will see a white cell, so it will feel that it is not selected, but it is. So when you make a selection like this, one cell will always be white in color. What that means is, that is the current cell. What do I mean by current cell? If I try to type something right now, it will get typed in the current cell, which is the white cell. Wherever that white cell is, it will start typing there. So having said that, when you did A1 shift B5, you selected essentially 10 cells. How do you represent this? 
e1 and b5 how do you represent what will come in between in between there will be a colon how do you write this it will either be called as a range or an array or a database these three words please remember you will come across these words you should not get confused range array database for now just remember that these three words are possible to use moving on again click on a1 please do it with me shift click on b5 now leave the shift keep only the control pressed and click on c7 i'll repeat a1 shift b5 control c7 when you do this now tell me what is the current cell remember the white cell which is the one so now you see that c7 is the current cell is that clear now what do you mean by the current cell how will we represent this selection the way that we have done it how will we represent this so we will say it is a1 to b5 because that was selected in a range with that we selected c7 individually so this we will name it as combination there is no particular word for it so i just call it combination hope you are learning something new don't worry about the colon and the comma they will come in when you start using the formulas they'll actually come in so don't worry about those right now but try to understand that when you select a range it's a colon when you select individual cells it's a comma as simple as that right moving on now we want to select an entire column so to select an entire column typically what you do is you take your mouse and click on the name of the column which is d e f whatever right there is a shortcut for this so what we will be doing is as and when we learn we will also keep learning shortcuts now if you want to learn all the shortcuts that we are going to learn together in one go please find a link below in the description where you will see a video with all the essential shortcuts right so that also you can see separately but otherwise you can follow these shortcuts one by one whichever way you prefer right so what you can do is you can click anywhere in the column this year 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 wherever and press control space control space when you do that you have selected the entire column now when you select the entire column you represent it as d to d why d because we chose the d column and why d to d because we are saying that irrespective of rows we want the entire column so this is how you represent an entire column similarly similarly if i want to select the entire fourth row i will click anywhere and press shift space bar shift space bar so control space bar was for selecting the column shift space bar is to select the row when i do this i can represent it obviously as 4 to 4 and this will be entire row learning something new all right the last thing in this video now if i choose the entire c column with control space bar and i do this right so if i select multiple columns with the mouse or with the keyboard i do control space bar and i use shift and right key right key shift and right key right key then i have selected c to d to e right but you will not write it like this you will write it as c to e so when you say c to e it means everything from c to e so we are saying full three columns or entire three columns all right so this was the fundamentals of user interface and cell referencing basics move on to the video 2 once you are 100% thorough with this and learn further if you have any questions in this video please do leave a comment below and if you've liked something that you learned do hit the like button do subscribe to the channel and more importantly 
make sure that you'll see all the 12 videos. So go on and learn video two. Enjoy.